In St. John chapter 16, verse 8, the scripture says this, When he, the Holy Spirit, is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Now listen to that. That's a word that's almost foreign in the modern church. But the Holy Spirit came to reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit didn't so much come to give you another laugh fest. Oh, I certainly believe in the joy of the Lord, and there's no joy like the joys of sins forgiven. Amen. The Holy Spirit didn't come to cause gold dust to fall down from heaven and land on people's clothes. Have you ever stopped and asked yourself, why would the Holy Spirit do that? You know, I was thinking the other day <clears throat> about the gold dust thing. Why doesn't the Holy Spirit go put some gold dust, why does he drop gold bars down out of the sky in Africa where the poor people are eating uh, worms and grass and sucking on rocks to get the nourishment off of them? No, the Holy Spirit came because he the main problem of man is sin. Man is a sinner, and man needs a Savior. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit comes, and He convicts us of our sin. And He convicts us that we need Christ. That's His primary function. There are other functions. Some of them we're going to discuss here today, but that's His primary function. The Holy Spirit, the Scripture goes on to say in the 13th verse, of John chapter 16. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now you remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit comes to reveal Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes to point men to Jesus. Let's keep reading. For he shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and He will show you things to come. Now the Holy Spirit does reveal the future. There are bona fide gifts of the Spirit that are in operation in the body of Christ today. However, the Holy Spirit does not come to reveal some type of revelation that's not found in the pages of this book. Everything that the Holy Spirit reveals to you and reveals to me Scripture can back up that experience, and if it can't, then it's not the Holy Spirit. All right? Verse 14, the Holy Spirit shall glorify me, Jesus said, talking about himself. The Holy Spirit has come to portray Christ to us. The Holy Spirit has come to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't want any glory of his own. He's always pointing men to Christ. He's always glorifying Jesus. And I want to say it again because it's so important in the day and age in which we live today. Any experience that we have, and there are bona fide gifts of the Spirit, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, the working of miracles, these things are legitimate. But any gift that we see in operation had better be backed up by Scripture. And some of this foolishness that's taking place in the charismatic world today, you can't back it up with Scripture. Uh, I mentioned to you gold dust falling on people. The angel craze. Let me tell you something. If you're talking to an angel named Emma, you're talking to a demon spirit. Do you hear what I've got to say to you today? It's time that we get back to the original function of the plan of God. Men are sinners that need a savior. And that's the business of the church. That's my business as a gospel minister. I don't, it's not my job to come into town and get blue smoke coming down the aisle and some titillating experience to get you all worked up. My job is to preach the gospel under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit convict you. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit deliver you. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in your heart and life. Amen. Verse 14 said, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit reveals to the individual Jesus Christ. If you want to know what Jesus is like, if you want to know 
what, let me say it another way. If you want to know what Jesus is like, read the Word. And if you want to know what the Father is like, look at Jesus. Turn in your Bibles real quickly to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. And the Bible says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Now, there, let me tell you this. There's no revelation being given outside of this revelation. When John closed it out on the Isle of Patmos, he closed it out. Finished. Canon of Scripture is complete. And now the Holy Spirit will give personal revelation to us, yes, but it will be to reveal this Word, the nuances and shades of its meaning. The Holy Spirit will apply it to our hearts. Hallelujah. But He's not giving any extra-biblical revelations. Now, you, you want to remember that. In these last days, God has spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things. This is by the means of the cross. Christ is heir of all things. By whom also He made the worlds. Who? Jesus Christ, being the brightness of God's glory and the express image of His person and upholding all things by the word of His power. So in other words, the Scripture's teaching us that if you want to know what God the Father is like, look at Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit comes to take the combined revelation of the Father and the Son and reveal it to the church. Reveal it to us. He convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He reveals the Father and the Son to the church. Now you have in that process right there justification he calls out to the sinner to come and get saved. That's just, you, then when, when you do that, when you get saved, you are justified. And then he has sanctification as he reveals to you further, now that you are a believer, he reveals to you the combined revelation of the Father and the Son. And it's all hinged on the book, the Word of Almighty God. Amen. So today I challenge you, I encourage you to walk in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the and let God speak to you today through His Word. Amen? And, and I want to say it again. The Word of God is the criteria by which we judge any and all experiences in our walk with the Lord. So I encourage you today. Develop in Christ. Walk in the Lord. Learn of Him. Let the Holy Spirit teach you today. In Jesus' name. Amen.